Welcome to OmniFocus Workflows with Rose Orchard, and uh, thanks to everyone who's here today. We've got a large group uh, from all over the world who speak many different languages, and uh, we had a great time uh, connecting before we officially started the session. And I'm looking forward to uh, all your questions and comments as we go through. And if you're watching a recording of this, uh, you're also very welcome. And I hope, uh, hope you find uh, what Rose has to share very valuable. I'm, I'm sure you will. And I think this will also be a nice introduction to those of you who are just starting to ease into OmniFocus 3, which will be coming out uh, around the time this recording becomes available. And I'll talk about that some more in just a moment. Uh, so first of all, if you're brand new to Learn OmniFocus, um, again, thanks for tuning in or watching this video. This is something I launched almost four years ago now. It was right around the time that OmniFocus 2 uh, was launched. And um, much to my surprise, it's, it's really, uh, really grown over the years. I'm based in Vancouver, Canada, um, conveniently just down the road from the, uh, the Omni Group. It's uh, from door to door. If I allow about three hours, I can be there uh, as long as there's not too long of a wait at, uh, at the border crossing. And I, I, I make a habit of going down there quite often. And I love meeting with the team, and just seeing, uh, giving my input, not just from my own use, but on behalf of the Learn Omni Focus community and all the great feedback I get from, from the members. Um, and as I mentioned, Learn Omni Focus has, has really grown over the years from its uh, humble beginnings four years ago, and we're now in 77 countries. And um, as I was mentioning before we began, I'm definitely looking forward to having some other uh, content in other languages down the road, uh, no definite plans, but uh, at least starting to add some subtitles. So if English isn't your, your first language, uh, just so you can get... Uh, get as much out of it as possible, and maybe we'll even do some live sessions in other languages down the road. Uh, let, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Uh, Learn OmniFocus Live was something I introduced uh, soon after uh, Learn OmniFocus launched, and I wanted to do something more than just provide uh, tutorials and content. I wanted to really have this feel like a community, and if you're here today, um, uh, you've had a little experience before we started the session today of actually seeing each other and communicating. Uh, we were, well, I should, should say we I don't really speak much German, but people were <laughs> practicing their German and uh, just sharing some fun uh, little anecdotes and things. So uh, that's something I really want to continue to build uh, through Learn OmniFocus Live. And it takes three main forms. So there's the uh, theme session, like the one we'll be going into to, to today in just a moment. And these are either a specific topic or a workflow guest. And uh, I'm very happy to have Rose Orchard as the workflow guest today. Um, and then uh, the, the next one will be a specific topic. And I'll mention what that is in just a moment. And then I also do smaller sessions. Uh, these are maximum 10 people called office hours. And this is where you can come and uh, and just come with your own questions about your own life and your own workflows. These are all kept confidential. There's no recording of these. And these are perfect if you're making the transition to OmniFocus 3, for instance, and you're maybe wondering how tags fit into your workflows. It'd be great to come uh, meet some other uh, Learn OmniFocus community members. And uh, these, these sessions are a lot of fun. So if you haven't been to one yet, I definitely recommend uh, coming to one of the upcoming ones. And something I've been doing for, I guess it's been about seven years, is one-on-one -on -one consulting with people. And I've worked with people on every continent except Antarctica. I still haven't tapped into the penguin population yet. I guess they don't use OmniFocus very much. Um, but I've, yeah, it's been a great privilege to work with people in all kinds of different cultures and professions and things like that. So if that's something you're interested in, you can get some more information on the website. So a little peek of what's coming. Um, the, definitely the most... Uh, Significant thing that's going to be unveiled actually just next week, it's due to be out on May 30th, is OmniFocus 3 for iOS. And this is really a major, major release. Um, and I'm really excited to have it out into the wild. Uh, I've been using it uh, since early March, as as has Rose. And I have uh, even saw some early previews of this last year when I was um, down at Omni Group HQ. And I can certainly attest to the amount of work and the thought that's gone into I think I was there, we were talking for like four or five hours and we'd spend like an hour just talking on one detail of one feature. So I really got a, a taste of, you know, what goes into these releases. And, and I think the Omni Group has really knocked this one out of the park. So OmniFocus 3 for iOS will be, um, will be uh, 
live very soon, and then the Mac version will follow later this year, and uh, look to the Omni Group for some more information on that. Um, and the next uh, live session, appropriately enough, is tapping into the power of OmniFocus 3 for iOS. So this will be going through some of the major new features, and it's also an opportunity to um, get, get questions uh, answered um, when it comes to OmniFocus 3. I'll definitely include some, some tips and tricks and things that are maybe not so obvious that can really make a big difference in terms of keeping things convenient and efficient. So that one will be on Wednesday, June 27th. Um, that'll be from 10 to 11 Pacific time, so the same time as uh, this live session we're going through now. And if you really want to come to these sessions in general and you're finding the time just doesn't work for you because you're in a different part of the world and it's the middle of the night, uh, definitely let me know. And I'm definitely open to even having multiple um, sittings of the same session if there's, there's enough demand. Um, there's also a couple of uh, Learn Omni Focus Office hours uh, scheduled for June, one on June 13th, and that'll be from 10 to 11 Pacific time and another on June 20th, which will be four to five Pacific time. So I hope that'll accommodate uh, pretty much everyone in the world. Um, again, if these dates are just not working for you, uh, definitely send me some feedback. So uh, you can uh, register for these. These are open to all Learn Omni Focus members, and you can register in these by going to learnomnifocus.com forward slash live. And if you're watching a recording of this and you're not a member, uh, you can uh, go to the website and get some more information on joining, and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you uh, want to try it out for 30 days and kick the tires and get access to all the content, that's definitely an option as well. <laughs> Uh, if you're interested in the private consulting, you can go to the contact form or to learnomnifocus.com forward slash private. All right, and that brings uh, me to our feature presentation, our feature guest for today, which is um, Rose Orchard. And I'll just give you a little taste of, I could probably talk for the rest of the session about all of the things that Rose does, and, uh, but I'll give you a little taste, and I'm sure Rose will be talking about this more as uh, as. I hand over the reins there. Um, so she's uh, joining us from uh, from Venice, uh, Vienna, sorry, Vienna, I just got back from Venice, but she's joining us from Vienna, Austria, which is another city I'd love to visit. It's very high on my list. And uh, she's originally from England. Uh, she's working there as a developer at the uh, Technical University of Vienna, and also doing a Master's of Science in Computing or Software Engineering. And uh, she's previously studied uh, French, German, and uh, TEFL, which is teaching English as a foreign language. So definitely a woman of many talents, and actually the very first uh, workflow guest, uh, woman workflow guest on Learn Omni Focus. So it's long overdue, and I'm sure we'll get some great, uh, great wisdom from what she has to share today. Uh, she's definitely uh, very involved in, in Omni Focus. Uh, She's a regular on the uh, OmniFocus forums, on the uh, OmniFocus Slack channel. So if you've been on either of these, I'm sure you know her name already. And has been giving a lot of great uh, feedback to the, the Omni group. So it's definitely a big part of the development as well. And if you're a fan of Mac Power Users, this is a podcast and a community that's uh, certainly very near and dear to my heart. And I've been connected with Mac Power Users since the beginning. And and um, I think uh, it's pretty hard to listen to an episode of the podcast now and not hear Rose's name mentioned. It's, uh, uh, so she um, was a guest on the show recently. She's uh, one of the main administrators for the Mac Power Users Facebook group. And this is a group of its past 6,000 members now. And I wouldn't have dreamed that a group of 6,000 a uh, Facebook group with 6,000 members could possibly be at all useful, but it's definitely one of the, my main reasons for using Facebook right now. So it's uh, definitely thanks in part to uh, Rose's excellent moderation of the site. Um, and uh, if you want to keep in touch with what Rose is up to, which I highly recommend, you can follow her on uh, Twitter at Rosemary Orchard. Uh, you can go to her website and blog at rosemaryorchard.com. And something that was just launched very recently is a site uh, dedicated to automation. That's at automationorchard.com. There's already lots of great content there. And um, you can follow it auto automation or ch on Twitter if you want to keep up on that. And I'm sure Orchard, I'm sure Rose will be uh, talking about automation as we go through today. That's definitely one of her her signature skills. So without uh, further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Rose, and take it away.
<laughs> so it tends to give me a fabulous introduction. I didn't realize I was the first female work for the guest, so no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So uh, as Tim said, I'm a developer. Um, uh, I'm a student as well. I'm doing my Master's of Science in Computing. It's online with the Open University, which means organization is pretty much the name of the game. Um, and I, I love to automate things. I'm a geek. I travel a lot and I, I like to beta test applications, which means break applications and submit bug reports frequently. Um, but I have to say OmniFocus 3 has been very, very solid for me. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my history of productivity and getting things done. Uh, this is one of the very first lists I ever remember seeing. This is actually the 2018 version of this list. But this is my parents' shopping list. It would always be in the kitchen. And they had a very, very simple system. If something would run out, you would just add a circle. And then when you went to check everything the day before you went shopping, you would just cross out anything that you didn't need. And then everything else would be the things that you should buy. Now, this list got me into trouble at school. Because as you can see, it goes from right to left. And lists, according to my teacher, only ever go from top to bottom. You shouldn't write across the page. So this list got me into trouble. But it is a great introduction to trigger lists because my parents never forgot things when they went shopping because everything was here to remind them what they needed to look at to see if they needed to buy it. Uh, when I went to school, they gave me a planner. Uh, this is a very similar version of that. And uh, we had to write everything in on the day that we were given it. So if I had a science class on Monday and I was given some homework that was due on Friday, I had to write it in on Fridays, uh, on, on the Monday with the due date for Friday. Unfortunately, as I discovered, when teachers give you homework in May, which is due in June, you start to miss things and fall through the gaps, which led me to purchase a Halifax. Some of you are probably familiar with this. I know Coulter um, showed his day runner, I believe it was, in his uh, tutorial. Um, the reason why I went for a Filofax was because then I could add extra pages when I needed them. Because as I started going through school, I needed more pages, lots more pages. However, I moved on to go to, oops. To university and uh, my school librarian recommended this book to me. She said, it sounds like your kind of thing. You might want to read it. Here's a copy. And I read it. And that was the beginning. With getting things done, I really learned how the trigger list that I'd always seen in my parents' kitchen worked, why having to constantly go back and find things in my planner hadn't been working for me. And I realized there was a solution. I decided to go digital. Uh, this was in about 2008, 2009. I bought an iPod Touch and I started out with Toodledoo and a Pidgeot to do, which was the iOS app of the day. It was pretty good uh, and it worked for me for quite a few years. But then in March 2015, OmniFocus released their universal app for iOS, iPad and iPhone. By this point, I had an iPad, I had an iPhone. And I've been teetering on the edge of purchasing OmniFocus because I kept seeing it everywhere. So they pushed me and sploosh, I jumped in. Three years later, I'm still here. Absolutely loving it. So I'm going to show you a little bit of my OmniFocus 3 setup. Um, this is all OmniFocus 3. And it's, uh, so if there are any specific questions about OmniFocus 3, then let him know and I'm sure he'll feed them into me. Uh, so this is where I start my day. Uh, I start my day in the forecast to make sure I know what calendar events are going on. And I also have an, um, a forecast tag. Now on this device, it's set to time. Uh, on different devices, I have it set to different things. Uh, so the forecast tag is one tag that you have chosen to show underneath the uh, events and um, do items in your forecast. So here I have time and as you can see in the evening I would need to charge my Apple Watch uh, which is something that I often forget to do and then it runs out during the middle of my working day the next day which is not very convenient for me. Now one of the big things to this is that you can set different tasks on different devices. So at work I have a uh, focus task for certain work projects that I've been working on. Unfortunately I can't show that to you because 
a lot of the work things are unfortunately uh, internal only. Um, and then on my big iPad, I have uh, my um, personal nerdy stuff, things that I really want to get done, which are pr probably very, very nerdy and great fun and the sort of thing that I will do when I'm sitting at home relaxing in the evening. On every device, I have a perspective called now. This perspective is never the same. This is something that I learned very quickly because I was seeing that I kept getting hundreds and hundreds of perspectives just filling up and I would never go back to them because I didn't need them again. It was a one off. So I set up this perspective and I can always toggle none of the following to all of the following and include or exclude my work projects as I choose. The perspectives in OmniFocus 3 are very different to how they were in OmniFocus 2. You can add lots of rules and you can nest lots of rules. Uh, there was an Omni Group show uh, released today, uh, which goes into the, for the perspectives a little bit, but I'll show you some of that here as well. So at the moment, I would want to exclude all of my work projects. I'm at home. No, thank you. Not working anymore. Um, and then I would just go through and select the tasks, uh, the tags, which I feel are appropriate to me at the moment. So for example, I have the 10.5 inch iPad. I've got my iPhone. Um, he's not here. It's the afternoon and evening. And yes, I could do something in iFinance. And this perspective is always changing depending on my needs, where I am, what kind of mood I'm in. It's essentially just filtering for the tasks that make the most sense to me at that point in time. And then I pick something that's interesting and I get on with it. Or in some cases, pick something not so interesting that really needs doing. Um, my project setup, I try to use my top uh, level to be my areas of focus. So um, I'm trying to focus on my masters of computing. I'm trying to focus on my personal nerd stuff. I need to be aware of my money, especially because the next area of focus is shopping. Um, and travel is a really big thing for me. So I'm just going to go into my, uh, my master's uh, program to show you a little bit about that. Um, and I generate all of my, my courses automatically with Workflow. Um, and I will show you in a moment how I do that. But essentially, I do everything in blocks. This, in some courses, a block is a week. In some courses, a block is uh, just a period of time. So they've said weeks one to four is a block for this particular course. And this is provided in the curriculum, and they suggest that you do certain tasks, certain reading, and to discuss certain topics in these blocks for me. Now, this is great because they're basically giving me my to-do list on a platter. Um, unfortunately, not every course is like that. So I always make sure that if I need to add something in, then I just drag and drop the inbox button <laughs> to uh, add a task where I need to do it. So um, I've gone with a quite deep hierarchy here for this particular um, project area because my my degree is separated into three sections. So you have uh, the first two courses are the postgraduate certificate, then the next two are the diploma, and the next two are the, the actual master's degree. Um, it just made sense to me to do it like this. It might not make sense for everybody to have such a deep hierarchy, but that's just one of those things that really helped me out. Uh, the next area is personal nerd stuff, oops, uh, which is where I have all of the fun things that I like to do in my free time. And then we come to, uh, I'll skip over money and travel because it's, quite frankly, just we can sell bank statements, for example, right now. And uh, yes, travel is another area where I generate pretty much every project in here. So um, I have to check in for my flights for this particular trip, and there's nothing else left to do in there right now except pack. Um, packing is somewhere else. So I'm going to show you how I generate, first of all, my university courses, and then I'll show you how to, I generate my packing list. So I do a lot of my automation in workflow. 
Workflow is great because you can either do, uh, you can add task paper to OmniFocus or you can add a specific OmniFocus item. Now these work in OmniFocus 3 as well as in OmniFocus 2. There's no changes needed. Uh, the only thing that you might want to make a difference uh, change is with the task paper using add task tags, sorry, instead of context. So my university courses, I, I nearly always have an existing project because I have to register for the course, uh, make sure that I'm signed up for it, pay my course fees. Um, and then I use that as the project name when it starts. So I'm just going to use my current project. Which is fine. Um, and then I get asked how many sections the course is divided into. Now, I'm just making this up here because I don't have my curriculum in front of me. Um, and then it goes through each section and asks me what is it called, when does it start, when does it end, and then what kind of section is it? Now, this is very important because each section is an action group for me. Uh, it could be a project for some of you if that's the sort of work that you do or studying that you do, um, but it depends on what I need. So if it's a study section, then it'll ask me what I need to do. And then it goes through section two, starts on June 24th, ends on July 24th, for example, assignment. And then it goes through and generates lots of tasks for me, depending on what exactly it is I need. And let's just finish that. Should have picked a lower number. And then this will generate something that is along the lines of this particular project. Uh, I cut it off there because it was running a bit too long. Um, but the idea is it generates all of these indented tasks for me, which can take a little while to do on the iPad or just be very complex to create. It especially allows me to copy and paste from my course website, which is, of course, a great time saver. Now, the travel one is very similar, which is why I've paired them together. And it asks me where I'm going, um, when I want to go, when I'm coming back. Um, and it adds a certain number of predefined to-dos based on just that. And then it asks me if it's a one-trip location or a multi-trip location. So if, for example, Tim's recent trip was something that I was planning, then uh, I would have lots of different locations. He mentioned that he went to Venice and a few other places in Italy, as well as many other countries. Um, or, for example, when I go on holiday later this year, I'm actually just going to go on holiday to Corfu, Greece, which is very nice. And then it does this. So it's a one location trip, and yes, I'm just going to Corfu, thank you. And voila, in OmniFocus, I now have all of these things pre-generated for me to save me some time. These are not the real dates I'm going on holiday. I wouldn't go on holiday for just three days, I can assure you of that. Um, and uh, it's helpful because it means I don't need to remember to do things like write down that I need to charge a battery pack or charge my headphones before I go or put the films and TV shows that I might want to watch on my iPad. Or book accommodation would be quite annoying to get there and find that, oops, I don't have a hotel, which hasn't happened to me, has happened to several friends of mine before. Uh, so this is all very useful. Now, we go back here. I do have a miscellaneous project. This is mostly for getting one-off tasks out of the inbox that I don't want to just hang around in the inbox um, for now. Uh, work, unfortunately, is empty. And I've recently changed. I used to have several routine lists. They were quite long, quite involved. 
And instead, I have decided that I'm just going to have one routine list and I'm going to use different tags to define what happens in my routine or when it happens in my routine. Now, these particular tasks are all daily tasks. Uh, afternoon, drink some water. Uh, in the morning, I need to make sure I pack my lunch before I go to work, otherwise I'll be very hungry. And again, in the evening, something that you saw earlier in my forecast is charging my Apple Watch. The brilliance of this is, is if I switch a ta task from, uh, for example, a weekly uh, routine to a every three days routine or to make it a daily routine, um, I don't have to change anything but the repeat. So I could have lots of tasks in here and I can easily filter using a perspective to get all of my routines grouped by evening, morning and afternoon. Um, here you can see I'm using multiple tags. So I've added the time tag to each of these tasks. That is so that I can actually have all of my routines show up on this particular iPad in my forecast view. You don't have to do that. It depends on what tag you want as the forecast tag as to whether or not it would make sense to tag items in this particular way. For me, that's what I decided to do because I really want to focus on making some good habits and not constantly running out of battery, not drinking enough water, getting to lunch and then getting to work and then having to go buy lunch because I forgot it again, things like that. So. I'm guessing the most exciting thing for all of you is the perspectives in OmniFocus 3. Now, some of you might have spotted already, these are not the same color as each other. That's because in OmniFocus 3, you can assign different colors to perspectives, and there are also more icons. So I've chosen colors based on my personal association with what I personally think matches a perspective. So my default perspectives are a purple, because that's OmniFocus colors. Uh, priority and coming soon are orangey reds, because it's, you know, this, this is gonna hit me if I don't get on with it. Uh, work is blue, because that's the university color. And then down here, um, I've just added these, uh, the Rosemary Orchard and Automation Orchard are essentially just project views, which I've saved with nice logos and colors. Um, to give me uh, a quick one, hit, one tap hit into those projects. And university is the color of my university there. At the bottom, I have three gray perspectives. These are my maintenance perspectives. They're not perspectives that I will go in and work from. They're perspectives that I visit when I'm doing my weekly reviews, when I'm tidying up my OmniFocus. And I've put them at the bottom to keep them out of the way and I've made them gray so that they don't draw my attention because the last thing that I want to do when I'm actually trying to get work done is to get distracted with maintenance versus actually getting things done, which I'm sure everybody, especially me, has been guilty of at some point or another. So I'm just going to show you, for example, what my priority tasks are. Um, if it's untagged, then it's hanging in the air. I do try and tag all of my tasks. It doesn't always happen. Uh, so it's potentially a priority because it could be falling through the cracks. If it's due soon or it's flagged, um, then that's a priority. Now you can see these three here are indented inside of any of the following, which means that it doesn't matter which of these is valid, as long as one of those is valid, they fall into my perspective. Now on top of that, I'm then filtering for only tasks that are available. If it's waiting on or it's pinned back by another project, uh, by another task, sorry, then it won't show up here. Um, and I only want to see projects which are active or on hold. I don't want to see any of the other options. Um, if, for example, it's deferred into the future, completed projects, drop projects, that's not interesting for me right now. So that's my priority. Uh, coming soon is uh, basically just my OmniFocus 2 perspective. I didn't upgrade this one yet. Uh, upgrading a perspective for people who haven't been on the OmniFocus 3 beta, it changes it from an OmniFocus 2 perspective like this to an OmniFocus 3 perspective. That means it's no longer available in OmniFocus 2 if you're using OmniFocus 2, for example, on your Mac, uh, which I do, and this is one of my perspectives that I'm using a lot on my Mac, which is why I've chosen not to upgrade it. So the 
for people who didn't see, this is uh, filtered by, sorry, it's organized by due date and then sorted by defer date. It's a very simple perspective. I believe this is one of the default perspectives actually that came with OmniFocus, which has been so useful to me that I kept it. Uh, can do is very simple. Uh, it's not a project, it's not a group, and it's available. So that means it's not uh, waiting on, it's not stuck behind another a task that needs to be done first. Um, and I just want to see this sorted not by projects, but by tags. Um, and I sort them just by the order that my tags are in here. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of untagged items. Um, there's a lot of things that are tagged with my Mac Mini. I could and it probably should have set this to tags combined, which is where it then looks through and it says, okay, let's hold this down. Uh, so here, for example, we've got Mac Mini and iPad. So anything that's tagged with Mac Mini and iPad will show in here. It won't show in the Mac Mini heading and it won't show in the iPad heading. It only appears once which is really useful if I know, oh, right, okay, I've got my iPad here. Well, I, mm, okay, yes, okay, so I can do that, or I can do any of these items as well. My next action list or perspective is very similar to the can-do perspective, um, but the availability is first available, and here I've sorted things by their projects and grouped them by projects. So I should see one action per project. I have not set this to available only. Um, this is first available, which means that, for example, the first available task in my uh, continuing professional development course here is getting the results for my end of module assessment. Uh, that is the only thing that can be done there right now. And it's very useful sometimes to just see, ah, yes, I am still waiting on that. I can't do anything else. I need to chase a certain person. In this case, I can't chase somebody. I'm waiting on a university and I don't think they'd take kindly to my prodding, but it's worth a try maybe. Waiting is very simple. Um, I actually have three waiting tags, which I will pop in and show you right now. So waiting in general is a state. And then I have waiting for and waiting on. Waiting on is when I'm waiting on a specific person to do something. And it's the date when they will complete that is unknown. Whereas waiting for is when there is a date that something is going to happen on. And this means that if I'm looking for people that I need to go and poke, perhaps I'm in a bad mood and it seems like a good idea, I do try not to do that, um, then I can check my waiting on list and say, ah, hmm, okay, I need to go and poke this person versus, okay, this is waiting for, I can't do anything about this right now other than sit, twiddle my thumbs and find something else to do. Um, I never tag anything both waiting on and waiting for um, because if it's waiting on a person to do something which they will only do on a specific date for me that is waiting for. You could of course tag it with more than one thing that would work really well. Nearly everything in my waiting on tag if there would be one would also be tagged with a person. So this is where the tags in OmniFocus 3 come in really handy. So I've got some different people in here, as you can see. And um, if something is in my waiting uh, on list, then it will have one of these tags. So I know, right, okay, yeah, I'm waiting on dad to mow the lawn before I can go and sunbathe, if only my life was so simple. Um, or I'm waiting on Philip, who's my boss, to complete this task so that my project can continue going. Like, for example, if I need a server to be set up. Uh, this is really helpful because it means that I can see things and I don't have to rely on putting the name of the person in the task name, which I think will probably help me out in the future when we do get shared tasks in OmniFocus 3, though that feature is not yet there. So let's go back to my perspectives. Changed is again one that I just stole from the standard uh, OmniFocus uh, perspectives, it's, and it's sorted by the date that things were last changed. So if I've added something today or made a change to something, then it'll pop up there, which is useful if I lose tasks, which occasionally I do. I'm in the middle of typing something and then something happens at work or the phone rings and I click OK and then I go, oh wait, did I put that in the right project? 
I can just pop in here, find it. Oh, yes, that's in the right project. No, why did I file that in this area that belongs somewhere completely different? My two work perspectives are essentially work is anything that's in the folder for work that is remaining. Um, I've been experimenting, as you can see here. Um, and Mandantan is an area that I've been focusing on at work. Um, it's a subfolder inside of my work folder. Where um, the times in OmniFocus 3 have come in really handy is I now have a 30 minutes or less perspective and a more than 30 minutes perspective. This works really well for me because I'm trying to tag all of my items with estimated durations, failing miserably, but I'm working on it. Um, so I'm looking for any, tag, any tasks which are available, which have an estimated duration of less than 30 minutes. You can say anything less than five, 15, 30, or 60 minutes. I chose 30 minutes because that's often the window of period that I, window of time that I have available to me. I could of course pick six five minute tasks or one 30 minute task. Um, and I don't do any particularly special sorting here. More than 30 minutes is almost the same. Uh, I've just said it has to be none of the following estimated duration of less than 30 minutes. As far as I remember, there is no estimated duration of more than 30 minutes. So as you can see here, so I'm using the none of the following to switch that around to make that work for me. Uh, then I have a deferred, which is for things that were, that did pop up in my, in my forecast view, but perhaps have fallen off the radar um, because it was in the past. This happened sometime earlier this week. I should have reconciled my bank statements. I didn't reconcile my bank statements. So I'm using that as a, hmm, you said that you wanted to get this done will get this started at this date and it wasn't there. So that's just very simple, has a defer date as my filter and the task is available. Uh, this means that if it's deferred to tomorrow, then it won't show up in this list. So this is only deferred items that have already been made available to me. Deferred and due is similar, not the same. If something that has a due date and a, defer and a defer date, but I set the availability to remaining because this allows me to see, especially for things that can only be done in a short window of time, what's coming up. So for example here, you can see checking in for various flights. That needs to be done at specific dates and times. And I need to know, right, this must be done here. For the specific case here of checking in for um, flights, um, you can add special notifications. I have all of my tasks uh, remind me, alert me when they, their def defer date arrives and when their due date arrives. That's every task for me. That's a default setting now in OmniFocus 3 and that works really well because it pops up and it goes, ooh, check in for this flight or this project is now, has now started according to work's timeline. Or uh, you said that you were going to work on this particular personal nerdy project like Automation Orchard, which has been in progress for quite some time. So you can add two different kinds of notifications. Um, before due, you can add it, and for the case of flights, I would add it as 12 hours before due um, as one notification. And you can add as many of these as you like. Um, what is also useful, especially with my university projects and my travel projects, is you can also add a custom notification where you specify exactly when you want to be reminded of this. So for example, university tasks, I often try and set aside weekend afternoons for these. And it's good to get a reminder from OmniFocus at 1.30 p.m. on a Saturday of, you said you were going to do this now. Um, it's a step between scheduling things in my calendar, which I don't like to do unless they have to be done at a specific time. Um, and, um, you know, adding it to say due or reminders um, to try and get a reminder at a specific time. And that works really well for me. Um, so, yes. Uh, now, uh, this is my Rosemary Orchard perspective. It's very simple. It's any task which is in this project. I'm sure some of you, perhaps if you've got OmniFocus Pro, have done a similar perspective in um, your 
for a project, perhaps a special project. And what I really like is all of these extra icons which have been made available for perspectives in OmniFocus 3, which combined with the color really lets me pick what uh, represents that project. So for example, my website is a nice purple color. So because I'm using purple as my default OmniFocus color, I've chosen a lilac here uh, to represent it. And Automation Orchard is a very green a shade of green. So, yes, university is the same again, but I've specifically said is not a project or a group. This means that um, the task itself is not the parent task of lots of child tasks or a project itself. Um, so I will only see, for example, on an essay, question one, question two, question three, question four, I won't see write essay. So I so for any of you who've ever studied, seeing the words write essay in your to-do list is anxiety inducing and it's also not a task, as David Allen would said, break it down into actionable steps. And that's why I really like the is not in a project or group filter um, because, sorry, is not a project or group. That really helps me just see what steps are actionable. Of course, I still see the hierarchy because of the way that I've set things up here. I'm sorting and grouping by entire projects. If I were to change that to individual actions, then you just see question one, question two, question three. So. Now, these three perspectives here are the ones that I go through when I'm doing my weekly review or to be specific, when I'm doing my clear up before my weekly review. I'm trying to get better at estimating times for tasks just so that I can then track my time afterwards and see whether or not it added up. I tend to go wildly wrong in both directions. I horrifically underestimate how long it will take me to do some things and overestimate how long it will take me to do many other things. So for me, it's useful to track my time as well, which I use Toggle for, T-O-G-G-L, anybody who's really curious. Um, and that then shows me, okay, you thought it would take you two hours to do question two, it only took you 20 minutes. Hmm. You might want to go back and check that you're, you've done enough work on this part or actually, no, you just really, really overestimated that one. Untagged is essentially the same as going into the untagged tag. Um, but I've got, again, the, the is not a project or group. And I'm only looking for tasks that are remaining here. I don't care about completed or, or um, on uh, the, the uh, just first available. I want to see just the remaining ones. Uh, completed is where I pop into and I look to see if I have missed something um, or forgotten something. So this is a trigger list for me. And that's really helpful because then I can see, oh, yeah, I did. Uh, I had to update the link to the last workflow. And, oh, right, yeah, that's been done. Was there anything else to do for this particular project? Let me just pop in and see. Okay. I'm going to stop editing and go to that project. I believe I found a bug in OmniFocus 3. <laughs> I will have to email that one in later. Um, but yeah, so then I can go to the project and see what's happening there and make sure that I've really fixed everything. Now, I do a lot of automation things. I've already shown you two workflows. One of the other things I do when I'm getting ready for my weekly review is I have an OmniFocus trigger list workflow. Now, I've simplified this one just to make it um, much shorter for you. My actual trigger list is approximately 30 items. And all this does is it goes through and it asks me, right, okay, is there anything that you need to be thinking about for work? So I'm going to put a cat and a red panda because everybody needs to think about red pandas at work. They're extremely cute. Um, oh, studies. Yeah, I needed to do that essay, for example. And travel. Um, hmm, I don't know. I feel like maybe Mac stock 2019 is a good idea. This then adds tasks into my inbox for me. Now I've put the trigger word in brackets after every task for me so that I can see what I was thinking about when or what triggered that particular thought for me, which will then allow me to process it um, better. 
Some of these things will get turned into projects, for example. Um, this one, oops. there we go, convert to project in travel. And some of these will just become tasks. For example, Red Panda, okay, uh, maybe I need to rename that one to print cute pictures of Red Pandas to put on my desk at work. Yeah, everybody likes Red Pandas, I think. Now you can make this much more complex than it is. I've chosen to keep it very simple. I used to have the trigger word put as a note into the task, but I found then that sometimes I was skipping over it and having it in the task name because I don't force myself to write complete task, actionable task names here. Um, helps me to better identify things later. Now, I also have this one, which is very useful. It's for adding a task and subtasks to OmniFocus, because if you've ever tried to add a task and you're just dumping lots of things and then, oh, right, I wanted these five tasks inside of this one, that can be a little bit tricky to do on iOS. So I have this one. I've asked it to pre-fill main task for me. Um, and then it, oops, just add these two. Then in my OmniFocus inbox, I now have a main task with two tasks inside of it for me, which really does save quite a bit of time. If you just want to dump six or seven things related to this one area, it can help with processing much later as well. So that is, I believe, the workflows that I have set aside. No, I'm missing one. Um, my blog posts, this is a very, very simple uh, uh, project template. Um, so I asked me for the name of my blog post. And then it goes through and it just tells me all of the various things I need to do. Um, and if I just add this, this adds it straight into the right project for me, which saves me quite a bit of time. And then here I can see actually what I've done here in my note, I've added a link to the workflow that I would then call to do this particular action, which saves me a lot of time. And I frequently link to workflows in the notes of my tasks if that's something that I'm going to use to execute it or partially execute it or set things up to do lots of things. Uh, one of my favorite accompaniments to OmniFocus is DevonThink. Uh, and DevonThink has the ability to copy a URL um, for uh, every document and every, action, every group and every database. So mostly what I try and do is I will create a group for each project. A folder in OmniFocus would become a database in DevonThink. Um, and then documents would become notes. So if the task, sorry, documents become tasks. So if a task needs lots of documentation, maybe I want lots of formatting, maybe I want a PDF, maybe I actually do need a group of documents to complete this task. Frequently happens when I do my uh, university studies, I need to read three or four papers to make sure that I really understand one topic. And then I can link to a group of things from DevonThink. And again, it's just like here, where you would have the uh, link and you tap on it and it opens DevonThink for you um, to that specific note or group of items. Drafts is somewhere where I do lots of work on project templates. So I've actually created a specific action group for drafts, um, which is very simple. Um, it's designed also to be used as the draft keyboard shortcut row, on especially on the iPhone where you don't have a tab key, um, or for example on the iPad where if you're using the on-screen keyboard you also don't have a tab key, which is something that I really like to be able to use to indent my tasks instead of tapping the space four times, which is quite tiring after a while, or annoying at any rate. So what I can do is I would use this perhaps to set up a nice folder or a project name, um, and then I would say, okay, um, okay, so this is going to be visit the zoo. And then that is due 
Mm, I'm going to say that's on Saturday. Oops. And, um, hmm, okay, and the context is going to be the zoo. Now, I've set this up to use both context and tags. Um, so you can, sorry, um, you can add tags as well. Task Paper in OmniFocus 3 prefers to use tags, but when you copy any, ta any task out of OmniFocus 3 to text, then it would actually use at context for the first tag and at tags for all of the tags. Uh, this means that it's then compatible with OmniFocus 2. So if you're working on a Mac more than I do perhaps, and you have lots of task paper items on the Mac as well, then anything that you copy will still work. You'll just lose any extra tags that you would have had. At the moment, I'm personally still often using context and tags. Uh, it's not necessary if you're all in on OmniFocus 3, uh, because I do use the Mac. I like to have both around. One of the things I've made a point of here is um, allowing um, automatic creation of things. So for example, if I want the this action group to be parallel, I don't need to remember, do I type true or, and false, or do I just do at parallel? Sometimes remembering the syntax for task paper can be a little tricky if you're not using it all the time. So the point of this is to help you save some time when creating templates, or perhaps you're just dumping lots of things um, and you don't want to be in the OmniFocus interface because you just want to write these things down and then you have to get back to a meeting and you don't want to get distracted with all of the other things that are in your OmniFocus. That's one of the many things that I use Drafts for, um, to get things into a specific uh, application or out of or through it without actually opening it. It's also very handy for mail if you need to send an email to somebody and you don't want to get sucked into your email inbox, which I know personally mine is very dangerous right now. Shark infested waters do not cover it. Um, so it's, it's great to be able to use to trigger stuff and then just get rid of it for you. Yeah, so there's one about uh, any suggestions on how to efficiently clarify what's in the inbox that has not been broken down into actionable tasks. This is where I get really hung up, and I see this with people a lot too, is they, they're very good at adding things to their inbox, but then it doesn't necessarily get into a very useful form, and they end up getting a little frustrated and, and go do use some other task manager or something like that, and then run into the same problem with that. <laughs> well, one, one of the things I try and do, I don't always succeed, is to, um, at least aside from the university things, include a verb in the task. Um, what is it that I need to do? Do I need to read? Do I need to visit? Do I need to buy, eat? Uh, eating chocolate is, of course, a task in every single project of mine and should be for everybody who, uh, who enjoys chocolate and can eat it at any rate. Um, and the other thing that I try and do is make it so that if I'm seeing it without the project and without the tags, can I, do I still understand it? I want the task name to be completely clear what it is I need to do. So for example, charge Apple Watch, that's clear what I need to do. I don't need to see that it's in my routines uh, project. I don't need to see that it's an evening um, based uh, item. It's just something that I need to do this. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I try and do. <laughs> well, what if it's something that's kind of vague, it's an idea of something you might do at some point in the future? Where if would, it's where would those a live? very vague idea, um, then I actually have a specific list in DevonThink, which is vague ideas. It's got an extremely useful name. It's very logical. And for things that are very nebulous that I don't think I'm going to be actioning on anytime soon, they go in there. And one of the things I do, not in every weekly review, every couple of weeks, um, is I go in there and I have a look at these vague ideas and I try and see if I can make them any more concrete. Often these vague ideas turn into projects or maybe folders um, and you can do this in any any um, note-taking application or document storage system of your choice, Bear, Evernote, whichever. Um, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's where okay, I'm cool. Going. Yeah, so you can you create a sort of a clean line between actionable stuff and yeah. your big ideas. And, yeah, yes. okay, awesome. Uh, There's a question from Zach. Uh, for routine items, how do you make sure they are not dismissed too quickly as a notification? or make sure those habits happen. And if I understand that correctly, I think it's kind of 
you know, we get sometimes a few too many notifications and it's easy for things to slip through the cracks. So, yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things I do um, for those is speci specifically on this iPad is that they are tagged in my forecast. Um, so this is the iPad. Um, it's actually the iPad that I share with my boyfriend. So <laughs> I probably shouldn't be using it for this, but it's the one that we pick up to use as the remote control for the TV. Uh, this is our Apple TV remote. It also controls Kodi, controls the lights, things like that. So that's the one that I pick up. And as I'm turning on the lights, I pop into OmniFocus. Ah, yes, I should be doing this. So I try and put it in my face. Um, one of the other things that I have is I use Launch Center Pro. Uh, that's this icon right here for if you can see my screen it's uh, blue with a white rocket on and that is uh, very useful because what I can do is I can trigger specific lists or perspectives projects tags to open at specific times and this has a different icon to OmniFocus it's blue with a white rocket not purple with black tick um, and that means that I can for example have my routines list open in the evening or my evening list open in the evening, which means that I look at it and then I go, ah, right, yeah. So there were these several things I needed to do in the evening. And the brilliance of using tags for my routines is that then um, I can actually add something else to it in my inbox um, or throughout the day and say, oh, I need to do that this evening, ideally. And then when I open the evening tag, I see the things that I suggested to myself that I would do this evening as well as the routine items. So I'm not just doing my routines. I'm doing the things that need doing, which is my routines as well, because routines are important to you. I think you've essentially answered this already. There's one, one from Coulter. He says, what about typing up a project as task paper then pasting into OmniFocus? What does a workflow give you beyond that? Um, well, a workflow for me, especially for things like uh, my travel and my um, my uh, my university uh, courses, it gives me the extra ability to generate specific specific tasks inside of tasks dynamically. So, task paper alone is great, and you can have nice things like fuzzy due dates, like Tuesday and Tuesday plus five days or plus five weeks, months, years, whatever. But workflow really gives me the ability to add extra tasks in there where I need them, especially for my assignments where I might have six questions and then each of those six questions has 10 sub questions. I do not want to sit down and type all of that out. No way. So generating that in workflow saves me masses of time. Cool. And if you're not uh, sure what task paper is, it's, uh, it's a text-based way of defining projects and actions. Um, so you could literally just open up a text editor and there's a specific format to follow, but then you can lay out your project and then you can put that into OmniFocus just by copying and pasting or by using something like Workflow. And we've got uh, some other content on Learn OmniFocus that gets into that in more detail if you want to. Yeah, and then there's an example of if one, it might look a little daunting, but once you understand how it's all formatted, then it's actually, actually quite straightforward. Yeah, there's comments from Coulter as well about including untagged at the same priority as do soon and flagged uh, to make sure things don't slip through the cracks. And I guess that's to give you some incentive to tag things, is that? Yeah, partially to give me incentive to tag things and partially because stuff does stick around for a while if it's not tagged. And those are possibly the things that are going to catch on fire and burn everything to the ground with them. So I, I need to make sure that I'm on top of that. Yeah. And if you're used to assigning context to things and tags is really just an extension of that, um, the, the difference is that you can have more than one. And also a tag doesn't necessarily represent a, a context. You could have a tag for something that's not technically a context as well. Too. Uh, a comment from Zach, there are rules. I'm not sure if that's a question or a statement. There are rules for excluding things tagged with certain tags. Um, yeah, that's where it gets really flexible where you can actually say, show everything that contains three, these three tags, but not this tag or things like that. And I think you're already taking advantage of some of that, Eros. Yes, yes, yeah. I am. Mm -hmm. Especially uh, the now perspective, that's where I really include things, exclude things, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love that now perspective. I think I'll need to use that because sometimes you just get stuck in a certain situation that you couldn't necessarily even predict and you can say, okay, what can I actually do now without having to kind of build a new perspective each time. So that's, that's great. Um, lots of fans of the waiting for and waiting on the distinction there. Um, 
Yeah, if you, uh, Coulter, as Coulter's saying, it's, that's a challenge with estimated durations too, is it can get tedious to add them to everything. Um, so I think that's great that you've actually got a perspective where you can easily identify which ones are, yeah. are, uh, are, don't have that, that field defined as well. Yeah. Um, having a shorter time duration to choose from will probably force me to clarify a bit better. Yeah, okay. So you're kind of assuming they take a long time unless you say otherwise, which is probably the safest uh, yeah. safest route to go. And the estimated times is sort of actually a context, really. So, for example, my current context is I have 30 minutes of free time. What can I do? Uh, yeah. look, at, look at the list that's 30 minutes or less. What can I do from this? Pick something, do it. Yeah. And you could, I suppose, could just have a tag called 30 minutes and another tag called five minutes. And it essentially yeah. comes you down could. to the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do anything you like with tags. That's the billions of them. <laughs> yeah. So, essentially, whatever is most convenient. Let's see, a uh, question, I don't know the answer to this one, maybe you know, Rose, about um, if you have a repeating task with a custom notification, I'm not sure how OmniFocus deals with that. I assume it only just notifies at whatever time you specify, regardless uh, of whether it's repeating. I don't remember off the top of my head. I believe that the custom notifications weren't kept in repeating tasks previously. I will just create a task, which is... Deferred until, uh, okay, yes, 2 a.m. today, and we'll repeat uh, based on the uh, completion. Yeah, that's fine. And add a custom notification. And let's see, that's here. So let's double check. So we have our custom notification there. It says custom next to it, which is very helpful for identifying these. And if I've completed it, then I'll clean up and it's disappeared entirely. So hmm. I need to have, I need to have yeah, that okay. one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not ah, sure myself what would yeah, happen. Then. Okay. Again, and it's, it's kept the custom notification. The tricky okay. thing with this custom notification in particular is that I, because I set it to a fixed point in time, um, I would not do that if you are doing um, re repeats and uh, notifications. I would always set them uh, relative to um, the defer date or due date uh, as yeah. as is appropriate because a fixed notification for tomorrow, well, tomorrow only comes once or never comes depending on your point of view. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I guess it's it's, it's in there, but it's not going to have any effect because it's the date, the date and time has already passed. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, one other, talking about notifications, one that uh, I think could be useful is you can say uh, notify me when it's uh, time to start. So if yes. you've got an estimated duration of an hour and your task is due in an hour, then you can actually have no, OmniFocus notify you. As a, hopefully you're not relying on that, but it is kind of nice as a, as a, a little, little safety net there. So you're not... Uh, of course, this only works if you have input at an estimated duration. Otherwise, you just get yeah, reminded exactly, yeah. of the due date and time, and oops, that's it. <laughs> and part of it's having the motivation, I guess. The more useful it is to have an estimated duration in there, and the more more justified it can be to actually spend that little extra time to put it in there. Can we get a link to a sample of one of your workflow workflows? Are those published anywhere? Uh, some of mine are already up on my website. The okay. others should be going up over the next few days. I ideally by uh, May 30th, so that people can grab them with OmniFocus 3. They do, of course, work with OmniFocus 2, so if you um, aren't upgrading straight away for whatever reason, then they'll, they'll work back fine with, abs with both. Okay, excellent, thank you. Another comment, Rose is brilliant. Definitely can't argue with that, uh, very true. <laughs> Do you generally use defer as this is the day I'm gonna start, or is it more about just having things become available, but you might start them a few days later? Um, it very much depends. Some things I do still defer it to when I think I'm going to be able to start doing it, but I'm trying to avoid doing that because I noticed I was deferring everything to sort of next Monday and then next Monday would come and I'd look at my forecast and go, oh my gosh, this is terrifying. Uh, and it was just overwhelming and I was no longer seeing things that were becoming available. Um, for some things, for example, my university studies, they're a little bit tricky. Some things I really can't start on until certain dates. Some things are sort of, you probably shouldn't start on it until this date. 
then I, I do input defer dates, but I try to keep them just for this is going to be available to start after this date so that when I see it in deferred, uh, it pops in. That said, I do uh, my routine tasks are all based on defer again. Um, so they all have defer dates and get deferred again when they repeat. Yep. Okay. And you mentioned you have the um, one where you can monitor things that have been deferred into the past and maybe kind of lost along the way too. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's that's this perspective here. Uh, how the rules are availability available and has a defer date. Uh, so anything that did come up in the past that I prompted myself to do, my, my finance things I've decided are very important to me and I need to focus on money because there's only so much of it available for me. Yeah, that's it. There's a notification popping in. Uh, yeah, then they get deferred dates as well. But also I can't really reconcile a statement until the bank gives me the statement. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. It's kind of distinguishing between when can I start something versus when do I want to start something or when is it kind of reasonable to start something? That's yeah. that's where deferred dates can get a little bit ambiguous. So. Yeah, so having these new facilities like multiple tags and the forecast tag and thing, I think will make give us a lot of options to work from around that. And someone's already installed your draft actions, so <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> I haven't installed those yet, but I definitely uh, look forward to, to using those myself as well. I know it's going to be um, a little, little challenging as we have OmniFocus 3 on iOS and OmniFocus 2 on Mac and just wondering how you're finding that sort of interplay between the two where you can't do as much on the Mac as you can in iOS in some areas in terms of using some of the perspectives and so forth. Um, well, for me, I, I love, really, really love iOS and my boss is very flexible. So he's more than happy for me to prop my iPad up underneath my monitor at work. Uh, I have a 34 inch ultra widescreen monitor, uh, which is very big attached to a MacBook adorable, the 12 inch, uh, MacBook. Um, and, um, then I put my iPad underneath that. So on my MacBook screen, I've got my mail and my calendar. My big screen is what I'm actually doing. And then my iPad is what I should be doing, um, which sometimes does not match what's on the big screen. I find just being able to look down and get right. Yeah. These, these are the things I should be focusing on right now with work. Um, that that's really useful and I can use a perspective also there. Um, some of my perspectives, as I mentioned, I haven't upgraded because I do use them in OmniFocus 2 on my Mac. Um, but for quite a while now, OmniFocus 2 has mostly been a capture device uh, for me versus something that I actively work in. I do go in there and tidy up tasks, rearrange things, etc. Um, and it very much depends how much time you spend on a Mac versus how much time you spend on iOS as to whether or not upgrading all of your perspectives right away is right for you. But I think everybody should give a couple of OmniFocus 3 perspectives a try because as soon as you get OmniFocus 3 on the Mac, you'll be able to use them and they're really powerful. It's really, really useful. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And, and sometimes even if you're primarily working on a Mac, it's nice to have the iPad or sitting there and it's kind of like the, the pad of paper on the desk in the old days. And, uh, so it's not a window that's buried on, in your, on your Mac somewhere. It's something that's sitting right in front of you and you can just be tapping things off as you're working through them. So so it's maybe an opportunity if you are very Mac-based and I, I tend to be as well. I, um, but I've noticed I've been using the, the iOS more and more with, with OmniFocus 3 especially. So what sort of criteria do you use to decide whether some, something becomes a, a group within a more general project or its own little small project that you... Um, it very much depends. Um, I tend to predefine things as this is a project um, and then anything that occurs inside of that becomes an action group. Um, I'm not afraid of having very small projects. I, I do. Some have literally only been two or three actions, and that's um, that's fine. Um, but generally, I'd prefer to have bigger projects with action groups in because action groups, for me, I can often complete just by ticking the parent action, um, but I wouldn't want to complete a whole project that way because it's quite possible I'll have to add more tasks to the project versus an action group, once I've created it, I'm probably not going to add tasks to it. Um, it's not always true. Uh, there's no hard and fast rule. But uh, yeah, that's that's generally how I work on it. Well, thank you so much, Rose, for, for joining us today. As someone said, you managed to squeeze three hours into one. There's a lot of, a lot of really <laughs> great information. Um, yeah, definitely go and check out uh, Rose's uh, blog and her new automation website. Um, 
Um, I'm sure you'll see her on the, the forums and on Slack and Mac Power Users and all those different places. And uh, yeah, really great to have uh, have you here today, Rose. And uh, maybe we can have you back um, as OmniFocus 3 continues to evolve. And maybe once the Mac, <laughs> Mac version is out as well. And, and uh, yeah, get some more more uh, words of inspiration. So thanks again, and thanks to everyone who joined today and for all the, the great questions.